NXL A-Level Maths Statistics, October 2020, Question 4. The discrete random variable D has the following probability distribution in the table as shown, where K is a constant. For part A, we need to show that the value of K is 600 over 137. So to do this, we know that the bottom row, all those probabilities, must equal 1, because these cover all of the things that could happen. So setting all of those k fractions equal to 1, we get k over 10 plus k over 20 plus k over 30 plus k over 40 plus k over 50 equals 1. What I've done now is to get rid of all those fractions, I multiply by the lowest common multiple, so that's 600. You can do it in parts if you like, or you can add the fractions together on a calculator, it doesn't matter. But multiplying through by 600, we get 60k plus 30k plus 20k plus 15k plus 12k equals 600. So 137k equals 600. Hence k equals 600 over 137. The random variables d1 and d2 are independent and each have the same distribution as d. For part b, we need to find the probability that d1 plus d2 equals 80. And we need to give our answer to three significant figures. So for d1 and d2 to equal 80, there are three possibilities. Either d1 is 30 and d2 is 50, or we could have them the other way around, d1 is 50 and d2 is 30, or both of them are equal to 40. Our total probability is going to be the separate probabilities added together. So looking at our table, 30 and 50, for this to happen, the probability would be k over 30 times by k over 50. For the second one, it's the same thing, but the other way around, but it's still going to be the same result. So as you can see on our answer here, we've got two times k over 30 times k over 50. The probability of d1 and d2 both equaling 40 is the probability of 40, so k over 40 times by itself squared, as in our expression here. Now putting our k of 600 over 137 into that expression, solving it on the calculator, we get 0.0376. A single observation of d is made. The value obtained, d, is the common difference of an arithmetic sequence. The first four terms of this arithmetic sequence are the angles measured in degrees of quadrilateral Q. For part C, we need to find the exact probability that the smallest angle of Q is more than 50 degrees. So we've got our arithmetic sequence, A, A plus D, A plus 2D, and A plus 3D, where A is the first term, D is the common difference, as told. We know that this adds up to the angles in a quadrilateral, so that equals 360. So simplifying this, collecting like terms, we get 4A plus 60 equals 360. Now A, the first term, is going to be our smallest angle. And as we're looking for a probability of this, we're going to rearrange this equation and simplify to get A as the subject. So dividing by 4, we get A plus 3 over 2D equals 90, which gives us A equals 90 minus 3 over 2D. We need the probability that this smallest angle is more than 50. So I've put the larger than 50 in there. Rearranging this, we get 3 over 2D must be smaller than 90 minus 50, which is 40. Hence, D is smaller than 80 over 3, which as a decimal number is 26.67. There are only two angles that this can then be. So if we look at our table, D has to be 10, 20, 30, 40, or 50. So if it's smaller than 26.67, it must be 10 or 20. So we want the probability that D can be 10 or 20. Well, this equals the probability of 10, which is K over 10, plus the probability of 20, which is K over 20. Putting our K value of 600 over 137 into that, we get 90 over 137. Note that it's asked for the exact probability, so we've left it as a fraction. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.